recap of last week. Um, we spoke about, we have the vessel, which is us. We have the light, the light shines, right? And then how do we connect to the light? The light is what and not what? The light is proactive and not reactive. So anytime in our lives where we're being reactive, where we're, we're the effect and not the cause, we're disconnecting from the light. Uh, we spoke about not chasing colors, not chasing the, the little things, but going after the light. And once you're connected, all those other things fall into place. And we also spoke about our correction. Who remembers the word for correction? Tikkun. Tikkun, yes. What kinds of tikkun do we have? What were the two types that I explained? Internal and external. External. What is your internal tikkun? Um, like the negative attributes. All the attributes that are not like the light that you're born with and you're here to fix. What was the external tikkun? The gifts you have. The gifts you have that you're here to share. Yeah, good job. Uh, okay, so one thing I wanted to start with was um, when we're pausing, we're pausing all of those feelings. You're pausing your, your, um, your thoughts. If you're feeling selfish, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling jealous, if you're feeling FOMO, that's another one. Like everyone goes somewhere and you have FOMO. FOMO is the epitome of being reactive. You are the effect. You are not the cause. And anything you do out of FOMO, you're inviting chaos and darkness into that situation. So whenever like if there's a contract and they're like you have 20, like one day left to sign this contract or you don't get this deal and you feel that sense of like, oh my God, I'm gonna miss out, pause. Don't do it because it's not going to go well. You have to make that decision proactively, not reactively. Okay. Uh, we said that our tikkun attracts our challenge, right? So if I'm a person who has abandonment issues, anger issues, uh, feelings of, I don't know, I'm always left out, my life will be perfectly mm -hmm. situated and be designed in the perfect way to touch upon that cavity over and over again until I correct it. And what happens if you don't correct it? Did I mention this? It gets, worse. It gets, it gets yeah. louder until you, yeah. If you're not proactively going after this stuff, the universe is gonna come after you with it. It's gonna get louder and you don't want it to come from the universe. You don't want it to come from pain and suffering and you wanna go after it proactively. Um, Okay, so the other thing we spoke about, that guy Joe, remember Joe got robbed? Mm -hmm. And so, skipped it. Yes, and skipped, skipped it. Exactly, exactly. So if there's something like Joe that's supposed to happen, we want to bank in on all of the lights so that we could avoid those hardships. So let's say Joe is on a, a track, not just to get robbed, but God forbid have a health problem or financial issue or whatever. The free will, that's in his movie. The movie he's in, that's in his movie. He's gonna get robbed, he's gonna get hurt. He has to go through that pain to get to the, to learn what he needs to learn to get to the next level. The only way he could avoid that challenge, that pain from coming to him is by banking his light and working on those attributes ahead of time so that he doesn't have to work on that situation in a big catastrophic way. We're good, we got that? Okay. Um, we all know the person who um, is always complaining. It's so hard for me. Oh, look, I cooked for you. I, it's not my mother-in-law, but I'll call it the mother-in-law syndrome. You know, like, like Raymond, the, the mom, like, look, I cooked for you. I did this for you. You didn't call me. You didn't visit me. I was worried all night. What is this person doing? This person is, first of all, being very reactive, yeah, yeah. but why? Why are they doing it? Why are they making it about themselves? Why, why are they complaining like this? They they want something. What are they getting? Attention. Attention. They're getting light. So by them doing that, they're like stealing little tidbits of light. They're getting light. What they don't realize is... They're taking yours. One. But the other thing they don't realize is, is they're giving up a bigger light at the end for these little small momentary pleasures. Okay, because being reactive is like a strobe light. It's a momentary pleasure. It feels good. It's like drugs. In the moment when you're yelling at your kid or that mom whose kid bullied your kid, you feel good. 
I'm gonna go tell them, I'm gonna go tell that mom, that, that kid can't do that to my kid. You feel, I'm gonna go set, tell the school, I'm gonna set it right, I'm gonna fix it. I got that phone call, who can I call? I have to fix this, right? That's all being reactive, but why do we do it? We feel we're getting something. You feel like you're getting small, small pleasures is what we're gonna call it, small pleasures. Yeah. But is that why, like, speaking from the flip flop of it, like when someone is like that with you, it drains you so much? It does much drain you. Because yeah. it's taking that yeah. light. Yeah, it does drain you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does drain you. So, so how do you like protect your light? That's Kabbalah too. Oh. But <laughs> <laughs> basically, Without... basically you just keep a boundary. You understand that it's them. Like we mm -hmm. spoke about that we're dealing in the world of the 1% and we want to be in the 99. You have to recognize she has her own reality she has her own demons she has her own uh tikkun her own challenges it has nothing to do with you you're just the puppet in her life mm -hmm. or his life or whatever it is mm -hmm. and they are in yours too it's just smoke and mirrors gotcha. if it wasn't this person it'd be another person whoever is bothering you whoever is here to hurt you it's not them it's not that person hurt me the light send a message to that person you got to go do this to sarah right now sarah needs to feel angry, irritated, I don't know, betrayed, whatever the word is, that person is just the messenger. Can you give us like a mantra to just stay in those moments? Like something like... Pause, say it out loud. What a pleasure. Because the only time you're shifting your movie is when you feel this pain. If you don't feel pain, if you go through your day and everything's smooth, you didn't shift your movie. You're not getting any light. You don't want that. You want that, you want to feel irritated in small ways, right? And then what we said is the bigger the challenge, the bigger the pain, the bigger the hardship, the bigger the light at the end of that, okay? So if someone, I don't know, stole a million dollars from you, right? It's a million dollars worth of light that you, you're a million dollars angry, right? It's different than $25, it feels different. So pause, okay. what a pleasure that they're showing me what I need to work on because otherwise we can't work on it. Okay. Right? And then what happens if you don't work on it? It keeps coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like debt. If you don't get rid of debt, you tack on debt. Mm -hmm. Right? My dad is so proud of me. He's listening so intently to my class. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now we have two kinds of tikkuns that I'm going to talk about. So, um, the, the handout that I gave last week, anyone have it with them? Yes. yes. Okay, can you hold it up? Can someone hold it up? No, this one. No, the one that says pause, reactive. Okay. It was the loose leaf paper, the third one. Yes, you got it, the third one, the last one. Yeah. So if you look at that, if you look at what she's holding, a challenge comes, right? Okay, at that point, you have no free will. Your challenge came up to you. That was sent by the creator, okay? How you react, what do you do next? It's pause. When you pause, you're making a choice. That's when you have a choice. If you don't pause and you just react, you have no free will. In that moment, can you hold it up again, love? Sure. In that moment, look, it says no free will. You feel lack. When you feel that challenge, what do you feel immediately? You feel like that's lack, fear, frustration, uh, doubt. That's all coming from that space. So anything you do from there, it says guilt, insecurity, anger, that's all out of your free will. Your free will is when you pause and you take a minute. It says over there, it's what a pleasure. The next thing you do is after what a pleasure, Anita, is to start speaking to the creator. You're speaking to your soul. Why is this in my movie? What is my lesson in this? Help me learn my lesson. Because the point is not to constantly pause. The point is those triggers are showing you what it is in you you need to change, right? So if my daughter talking back to me upsets me, I'm not pausing every time she talks back to me, that she upsets me because I have control issues and I can't control my daughter, right? And she's not listening to me and I know better, but I have a child who doesn't listen to me just to touch that. Maybe someone else doesn't care. Maybe someone else says it's okay, they should be free. Why are you trying to control them? But it irks me. So. The point is not your pause. The point is to find out what your trigger is. What is your tikkun? What's happening in there? Start unraveling it. That is exactly my trigger. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's all of our triggers. I think it's still my He's dad's trigger. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Sarah, uh, a question. When you pause that moment, when someone tells you something like that, yeah. Uh, what's your answer to that person? Are you gonna answer anything, or you, you just, don't have to answer anything? You just pause. You're just pausing. You don't say anything. No. Okay. You you if you feel if you're in a moment where you have to say something, you can say I I'll talk about this later. Okay. I'll get back to you. But when you're in that moment, like you don't sign a contract mm -hmm. out of fear or out of anger. You you don't do anything important when you're not in control, mm -hmm. when you're not proactive, mm -hmm. because you don't want to be the effect. You want to be the cause. Okay, so there's two kinds of tikkuns that we have, internal tikkuns. One is a mirror tikkun, and the other one, I'll just call it a regular trigger tikkun. So a mirror tikkun is exactly what it sounds like. It's a person or situation or challenge that reflects a certain negative trait in me. It bothers me because I have it, right? So if I'm a controlling person, okay, I get really annoyed when I see other controlling people. So we're making plans and there's someone <laughs> controlling who's saying, no, we're going to go to this restaurant at this time. I might not say anything, but I'm just like, Ugh. right? Why? Because it's touching on my same button. Okay. Uh, it won't bother you if you don't have it. Like if someone says to me, Sarah, you have such ugly straight hair. It doesn't bother me. But if someone says you have ugly curly hair, well, I have, it bothers me. So the triggers don't bother you if you don't have it in you. Mm -hmm. So anything that upsets you, it's not your husband, it's not your sister, it's not your friend, it's you. Okay, so I said like there's someone who annoys you. I'm sure you could all think of someone that annoys you but doesn't annoy anybody else, right? Everyone else thinks they're charming, thinks they're beautiful, thinks they're wonderful, but you're annoyed. Why? It's they're touching your cavity. So that's a mirror tikkun. It can also be the opposite. Like if someone, it would, if I have control issues and I see someone who's so um, disorganized and go with the flow, like the complete opposite, that would also touch my cavity. Okay? Mm -hmm. So a trigger tikkun is something that is not a one-to-one -one ratio, but it still awakens something in yourself. Okay, like someone's in front of you, they're really slow. Maybe you're not a fast person, but it's just something that triggers you or the pen clicking, <laughs> just a general awakening. So um, an example that I like to think about is these moments are the moments, okay? It's nothing else. Your purpose here is when you have these moments to transform yourself. So imagine you're going on uh, a trip, you're on a business trip, you're about to close, I don't know, a multi-million dollar business deal and you have to fly to Vegas for this or wherever you're flying, somewhere further. You're in line to buy, I don't know, water or something before you get on your plane and you're late and the person in front of you is counting their pennies, you know, and it's taking a long time <laughs> and you're like, you want to kill someone and you're like, what do I do? I'm going to miss my flight. In that moment, what's important? Your multi-million dollar flight? Get the water. No. Just leave the water and go that too, maybe it's something else, but forget, forget the contract, forget the business trip, forget missing your flight. This moment where you could not be reactive, not talk back to that person, not, okay, and just sit in it, you're gonna release more light into your life then and there than this potential deal. Mm -hmm. And I know that's hard to fathom, but you're bringing that light in. When it comes in your life, it seeps everywhere. It goes into your health, it goes into your children, it goes into your relationships, it goes into having a calm state of mind. You're not um, anxious and del shure, you know, like um, worried, anxiety. It seeps in everywhere. Okay. We're good, any questions? Not, it's not that anger management. You, you see the reason behind it. Yeah. It's because you want to see the light behind yeah. it, right? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. It's because you know there's something better coming. You're okay. giving up the small pleasure of, Ugh, okay? Or like saying to the person, hurry up, or what are you doing? Or whatever it is. Because you know you're gonna connect to something greater later. Or in that moment, actually. In that moment, you're connecting. And it draws down, you're turning on the light 
It's a switch. Every single time you're not reactive, the light's on. The light's on. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Every time you're reactive, it's a strobe light. It's a lot brighter, right? But it's not constant. Mm -hmm. And the darkness that falls is harder. So in that, when you're pausing in that moment where you're late for your flight, you're recognizing, and this is a hard one, but that you're really not in control, right? Your only control is to not be reactive. Everything else, the light takes care of it, right? The light is infinite. If the light wants you to have that million dollar deal, it'll find a way to get it to you, mm -hmm. right? But if you're not connected to the light, you didn't open the door. It's like the water bottle that, the example I gave, the empty water bottle, you put it under water and it has a lid, The water, it's putting pressure. You need to open up the lid for the water to come in. Okay, another one. Um, when we do something, let's say, let's say I talked back to my dad or I yelled at my daughter or I did something, right? And then for like two weeks, I'm like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? I wish I said this, I wish I said that. I was reactive for one minute, for one second, when I snapped at my daughter or my dad, right? But what am I doing every single second that I dwell on it, that I feel shame, that I feel guilt, that I'm thinking about it, I'm turning off the lights. Yeah, every single second. So I know it sounds counterintuitive. We're, we're teaching Kabbalah, like work on yourself, go within yourself, go in, quickly look, get the hell out. Don't dwell. Every second you're dwelling, it's like having a leak. All your water, all your light is draining out. You're bringing in negativity every second. Mm -hmm. Why did I say that? I should have done. And you think you're doing a good thing. Like you think you're, you're, you're improving yourself by feeling guilty. You're not. Oh. Worrying about your kids never made them better. Feeling shameful about something never helped you. Oh. Right? Go in, get out. Any questions? Juna. What about when you're mourning? Good question. Because... Mm -hmm. Normally when you're mourning, so that's a normal feeling that comes up a lot. I Very good question. That's... When you're mourning, you're actually given kind of like a time lapse, like imagine the matrix. You have like a, a paused year, one year in time to have all of this, where you should be feeling sad, thinking it, this is all part of it. it um, but when the year is up, you then work on yourself. And it's not easy, I, I know. It's not like you turn on a snap and you're happy after like the 12 month mark. But at that point is when you proactively try to shift consciousness. Mm -hmm. But right now, everything you're feeling and going through is part of the healing process. And I'm going to add also um, that this one year, the feelings of grief and all of that is normal. It's good. Not, not that it's good, but it's part of the process. After the one year mark, mark the, the pain that you feel when you're how do I put this by you experiencing pain and grief and sadness after one year you're causing pain for the soul of the departed Whoa. yeah so after one year wrap it up okay. and it's not it's not easy listen my mom passed 16 years ago I'm still sad about it but you have to actively try not to be in that place of like like you have to proactively try to change that Okay. 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 I handed everyone else a worksheet. Do you guys have the worksheet? Mm -hmm. the, the stapled papers? Mm -hmm. Can we get into groups of three? Let's get into groups of two or three. And if you guys could just figure out which one do you think is you? Which one do you relate to? Okay. Yeah, the stapled paper. Yeah, yeah. Re re yeah, see which one? Which oh, reactive okay, okay. is you? It says if your trigger is, your tikkun is this, your thing is this. That's why I printed bigger ones too. Where is it? Print it right before the cooperate time you had. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, it's me. printer. Come you'll see. See if you relate to it. And then I'll text it to you also.
And when you want to say no, that's exactly where it is. When you feel defensive. But I pushed your button. She's so upset about it. What, what do you think it touched in you? Why did it hurt you? Because I don't, if I, my kids tell me that all the time, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell me? Yeah, I don't care. They tell me all the time. I'm like, whatever. No, I, I listen to them, but it doesn't hurt me. Why does it hurt you? I just want them to understand what I'm thinking. But I just talk too much when I'm trying to get them to understand. But when I talk about it, I don't care. 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 You just wanted to connect. You yeah. wanted to connect with them. My kids say it to you. My kids say it to Elijah, my eight, my ten year old says it to me. Don't talk long. Okay. Okay. I just listen to Okay, 30 more seconds. I need to be and
Okay, guys, are you ready? If there are more seconds, 30 more seconds. Okay, that one. Where is your tick one? Yeah, I know. I can tell you the quality tick one is in triad. I can tell you the quality tick one is Try to figure out tick one is shit. What is it? That doesn't mean You'll see it, it's usually a pattern. That's why you have to People always betray me. People never appreciate me. You know, they have patterns. Yeah. The way you know it's hey pishmiat. Have a click pishmiat, any pattern has any intipunit. Yeah. It's a hard one. Okay, guys, are you ready? Okay, did anyone figure out what Tikkun they might have? Who, me? Yeah, did you figure out anything? Okay, she want to share? We don't have to. Mine? Yeah. Oh yeah. For what did sure, you relate for to? For sure. For sure. <laughs> 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 um, this is the thing. I need to do everything logically, efficiently, or else I get upset. Mm -hmm. So I have to like be okay with the unknown. Yeah. And it basically says like if you if you're always operating out of logic and being efficient, then you don't get to taste the ninety nine percent, and so you just have to. What does it mean? I just have to go with it. And it's true. Sometimes I do think I'm like, why did I do that? That's such a waste of my time. Like, there's so many other things I could do, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And if I open myself and just do what I don't naturally want to do, then maybe there's something in there for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good one. It's a deep one, you know. Anyone what, else want to share? Is there any like specific thing which triggers you all the time? Yeah, if someone's like not efficient, it bothers me. No, that's me. Okay. Like, for example, for example, one of them to go Like, in Judy, they don't want to buy Just go get the thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, 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 right. Like, when they're inefficient, or I was in a management position, I had to train people mm -hmm. when they weren't like efficient with their time. I'm like, what you? Time on my rules, two kishi. See the other two kishi, time on my rules, you wrap it up. But you know? everybody yeah. cannot do that. For example, yeah, if it still. takes 30 minutes for you, maybe for me, it takes two hours. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hope, yeah. No, you yeah. cannot complain about that. Hope no, I don't know. If, no, it's it's a it's a if I have a car yeah. gas, yeah. I'm like, why? 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 I'm like, so you have I have to just like, you know what? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I like my house is like run like a ship and if anything's off I don't do well. What's your sign? Pisces. Uh -huh. Um so definitely oh, you have a birthday now. Yeah, it's my birthday on Sunday. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you. So especially when it comes to like people around me, I like everything like aligned a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I'm not understanding my solution. People are places and projects are achievements. Mm -hmm. Not what will make you happy. So not I think just recognizing my whole goal yeah. was just recognize what your hundred percent what it is in you that's triggered and honestly since the start of this class I am noticing like my reactiveness and I'm trying to just always say like surrender so like let things be great so within these like few weeks you know what I mean yeah. I've made changes and even today like something happened and I usually would back off and be like I'm just gonna sit in my sadness mm -hmm. and I said you know what I'm coming like within like two minutes I'm like I'm not coming today and then I'm like you know what save me a cake so I'm noticing little transformations that's within great myself that's and huge allowing like the empath in me to like break down that's huge thank you I have a question yes those of us who felt like the second one I need to be in control and the um, need to micromanage did any of you guys feel this way before you had a family? 
I wasn't this way until I had a camera. It's not that you weren't this way. Okay. It's that they held the mirror up for you to see it. So I was just, perfect thing. I was about to go into an example. Imagine there's a single girl, okay? She's single. She's beautiful. She has a great job. She's making a lot of money. She's traveling. Um, she, I don't know, she cures cancer. She helps orphans. She does all these things, right? But she can't be in relationships. When she, whenever she's in a relationship, it doesn't go well. She doesn't, she likes her freedom. It doesn't, she gets offended. She just, you know, whatever. She, imagine she passes away. She dies. Okay. Like at an old age and she goes into the heavenly courts and now she's standing in front of the creator and the creator is like, okay, tell me about your life. And she's like, I had this multi-million dollar company. I had people working for me. I would be a, I don't know, lecturer. I saved orphans. I cured cancer. And they're like, okay, the gates to hell are that way. And she'd be like, but why? She's like, you were here to work on your tikkun. Okay. And relationships were difficult for you and you avoided them. Mm -hmm. You didn't get married. You didn't have kids. You avoided all relationships that pushed your buttons. Right? So you, you, what, what hell is according to Judaism. Okay. So we all dove into our tikkun. What hell is, is for 11 months, you see all of your missed opportunities to draw down light. That's hell. Okay, you, it's not, there's no fire, there's no pig, there's no guy with a, you know, there's none of that. It's just, you see and you, you, you see what could have been, what you could have done, your potential to bring in light. So imagine that person, that girl sees that. So she says to the creator, let me try it again. This time, my tikkun is to work on relationships. Make sure I'm not pretty. Make sure I don't have money. Make sure I'm not charismatic. Do whatever you can where I have to rely on people. But this is something the person asks God or well, God your decides. soul is your a part soul? of God. It's one and the same. So it's kind of like you're working together. It's kind of like is the drop in ocean. It's like an okay. When you choose your life. So you cho you choose it. You choose it. Yeah, you choose your life before you're born. Yeah. With God, but it's right. like it, so imagine, so when you're saying that, you, I didn't see any of this until I wasn't controlling before I was married. I wasn't controlling before I had kids, but I didn't have the opportunity. You know what I mean? People weren't in my life to trigger me. I didn't wake up with kids and a spouse. <laughs> Those opportunities weren't there. Does that, did that answer your question? Mm -hmm. So they come into our life, I'll get to you. So every- Because I could control my own destiny, yes. my own Yes, because if something day, was uncomfortable, own... you got up and left. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You weren't forced. So when you're married or when you have kids, all of these are, okay, you're doing well, you're working on your tikkun, here's level two, here's level three, here's level four, right? Each kid, each relationship, each, each close relationship brings more out. What were you going to say? I'll probably ask it at the end because I think it might segue into something else. Okay. So imagine, again, I, I keep thinking about that. This girl, imagine, she cured cancer. Oh, and I'm going to talk about that. So imagine she really does cure cancer, okay? If she's not working on her tikkun, okay, the number of people who she saved by her curing breast cancer, that same number will die from a new disease somewhere else because you don't cure diseases in a petri dish in a lab. It happens by bringing light into the world. Mm -hmm. Should I say that again? Yeah. Yes. 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 When someone says, we've cured this disease, that girl who died, this amazing girl who helped orphans and cured cancer, mm -hmm. okay? Yes, she cured one disease, but at that same time, another disease emerged somewhere else okay. that affected and killed the same number of people. Mm -hmm. Because you don't cure diseases by doing things on the 1% level. Mm -hmm. You bring in the light on the 99%. When you operate on the 99%, that light comes in. When you're operating on this level, mm -hmm. if, not, if not here, it's there. You help that orphan, whatever, now that orphan is a terrorist. Like if you're not working on your tikkun, whatever you're doing, you're not bringing light into that situation. You think, in a snapshot, you helped something, but you're not seeing the big picture. The only way for that big picture 
to work out is when you connect to the light. How? Pause. What's my T-coin? Work on my T-coin. Yeah? So he just did cancer and research. So that's what my husband does. He does cancer research, right? So if he's not working on his tikkun, then the, none of that matters, yeah. basically. And I know you said such a specific yeah. thing, so that's Yeah, uh, it's interesting that came to my mind and you're in the class. <laughs> um, but it's basically, yes, yeah. but it's not just him. It's all of us. It's everybody. Right. Do you get it? That, that light... They call it a critical mass in science. You need a critical mass of something for the, for the scales to tip. When you have a critical mass of, I don't know, of people who think in a certain way, okay, okay all of a sudden, everybody will start thinking that way, right? It takes a, a certain energy, a certain momentum. I don't know if I'm explaining it well. So... When he's worked on his petri dish, and I'm not saying he should quit his job, no, no, I don't, I don't just, but he's going to bring in more light and save more people just by working on his decoy. Okay. And by doing that, things will fall into place for him or somebody else to figure out whatever needs to be cured. Mm -hmm. Because the point of disease in all of this is that it's darkness. It's areas where there's no light. Mm -hmm. The only way to solve that is to turn on the light. And I know this is a huge, huge no, I concept to grasp. You want to say something? We're off the topic anyway. I was just going to say, aside from like attributes and personality and like, you know, anger and whatever, jealousy, all of that stuff, where does religion come into Tikkun? Like, is, is I love that you're asking like, that. I love that you're asking that. Like, we all fix everything, but then like, let's say someone isn't like, Shomer Shabbat, or they're not kosher, or they're okay. not even. Jewish. So these what are all moments. Shabbat? All of the all the mitzvot that we have are opportunities to connect. Okay, so we just had Purim. What was Purim? When you hear the Megillah, what are you doing? It's like you're taking your blow dryer and you're plugging it into the power. Okay, it channels through something. What is it channeling through? The words of the Megillah. Okay, let's say eating kosher. Okay. What does it matter? Does God care? Is he like a man sitting up there? Oh, you didn't eat non-kosher meat. No, it's not like that. You're creating a vessel. You have a vessel. I could have this size vessel or I could have this size vessel. How do I work on my vessel? How do I expand my vessel? You have the different mitzvot that help you expand your vessel and you have the restriction. It takes both. And every, every person has their own path. So I can't tell... Um, a Buddhist, this is your path. Right. Everyone's path is like a unique frequency that goes with your own soul and your body. So ours, this is our frequency. This is how you expand your vessel. What you put in your body creates your vessel. So my kids are now wondering, should I keep kosher or should I not? And they're learning the laws of kashrut and they're like, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? And I explain to them, it's your vessel. Shabbat, you're asked about being Shomer Shabbat. The energy is there, okay? The, the light is on. Do you want to put clouds in front of it? You want to put a sheet in front of it? Or you want to remove all obstacles so you can absorb it? When you um, have connections on Shabbat, whatever the connections are, and I'm not telling anyone what to do or not do, I'm just saying what is. Every aspect of connection that you engage in takes a shell, takes a barrier, takes a filament, like a blanket in front of the light in you, away. So you're able to access more light. More light comes in. Also increases your vessel, right? So it's not like somebody comes back in the next life. I mean, obviously everyone's got so yeah, many Yeah, no, they could. Ones, they could. But, but coming back to become more religious can They be could, tool, because, example, because imagine... Yeah. If you, were, if you had the opportunity to get a lot of light and you didn't, what are we here for? We're just here to get, to connect, mm -hmm. to draw down light. And then um, your mom asked about tikkun olam. Mm -hmm. There's a concept, and this is way beyond this class, but the whole concept is when everybody is doing stuff to bring down that energy of all religions and aspects, uh, we tip the scales and it, it's what they call the age of Aquarius. It's what they call end of days. It's what we call Mashiach, mm -hmm. right? The world shifts, but that's a huge, mm -hmm. that's not like a class three Kabbalah one. Right. Yeah. Okay. But when you're saying more religious, 
you have to change that mindset. It's not, I'm listening to what some rabbi said, right? right? That rabbi is nobody. It's my connection with the creator. Mm -hmm. It's more of a spiritual. It's 100%. Yeah. He can, that rabbi can't doing. tell me I'm doing it right or wrong. He's right. not, um, in the Middle Ages, there was a guy who would sell, he was Christian, he had the key to heaven, right? And you would have to like be on his good side and bribe him for him to give you the key to heaven. We don't have that. There's no intermediary. It's you and the creator. That's good. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, I'm going to wrap it up because I know it's been a while and you guys have to go. Um, so that girl's only job was to enter a relationship and face her fears and work on herself. So she asks, make me not pretty. Make me not have money. Put me in the situation where I have, I have no choice but to depend on people. And that makes her work on herself. So that would be her next lifetime here. And then she comes back hopefully yeah, with no career. Yeah, yeah. And just so she needs to have a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the example of this is, imagine you go to a party, and before you go to the party, imagine it's New Year's. You know you're gonna get drunk, okay? So you give your keys to your, to your friend or to your husband or whatever, and you're like, I'm gonna drink, you take the keys. You made this decision before you got drunk. What happens once you get drunk? Give it to me, I could drive. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. And you're fighting to get your keys back, right? And you're in pain, you're suffering, you're pissed. We've all seen people like that, right? Mm -hmm. Where now they're making like a decision, but they're not where they were before our soul came here. Our soul knew what it needed. So it decided to come ugly with no money and whatever, you know, to create that relationship or whatever your challenge is. Your challenge is always going to be painful. It's never going to be easy. Wherever you have pain, wherever there's mm -hmm. uh, that feeling of, I don't know what to do, of lack, of uncertainty, of anguish, that's where your tikkun is. That's where the light is. So one person said that those who have to teach this failed so miserably in their past lives that the only way that they could fix all those lives is by constantly teaching and taking classes. And so everything you're doing, never think that I'm learning spirituality. I know more than that person. You're only learning it, us, because we fucked up so hard before. Okay? It's not coming naturally to us. Um, yeah, so we ask the creator, this is another way to say it. We ask that when we were born, we ask the creator to limit us so that we're forced to work on that thing that's hardest. So when you shift your relationship, when you're doing spiritual work, this is what you were talking about. Marriage and children magnify the work you need to do. So the more, the more you correct yourself, okay, it's like an onion. You correct one layer, there's another, there's another, there's another. It's like I'm controlling in all these different areas or I see other tikkuns that I may have. Um, should we stop here or should I do one more thing? one more okay so the other one that i'm going to do and then we'll stop is people say that this is not the marriage that i wanted this is not the marriage i thought it would be this is not what i wanted am i married to my soulmate i'm going to touch on this concept again but what i want to say is your soulmate is not a human that you meet okay you create your soulmate and it could be friends it could be your sister it could be also your spouse when you work on yourself spiritually okay 